The number one question asked about the Axe FX3 is, how do you use it? And you know what? That's a really good question. Let's dive in. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. I'm Doug B, and I really do appreciate you spending some of your time at my channel. The guys at Fractal Audio built the ultimate preamp effects processor, and it can replace entire rigs. I mean, there are bands that have the guitars and bass all running through one FX3. However, like the majority of musicians don't understand what the FX3 is or how it works. There are some guys that are just put off by something that isn't a traditional amp. There are also a lot of guys that are curious about it, but then they get frustrated when they find out that you either have to buy it new from the factory or buy it used like off of eBay or Reverb or something like that. You can't just try one out at Guitar Center. They want to know a lot more about it before opening their wallet, and who can blame them? FX3 is a lot of rig, but it is not inexpensive. You're going to be throwing down a big chunk of change to pick one up, unless you get lucky like me. I was literally in the right place at the right time. I had a Duesenberg guitar that I wasn't using. Another guy had an FX3 that he wasn't using. We traded straight up, and that was without a doubt the best trade that I have ever made. But it was still a gamble because I had never tried an FX3. It's definitely a leap of faith. But if you've done your research, you know that a lot of major and not so major artists are using the FX3 in the studio and on stage. Now these guys can have literally any gig that they want and they chose the FX3. Why? Because like I said earlier, it's the ultimate preamp effects processor and it can replace entire rigs. And hey, if you do decide that you want to try one, Fractal Audio has a 15 day money back guarantee. Just don't get stuck on one preset for the whole 15 days. Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing here, go ahead and hit that like button and, you know, just lightly tap that subscribe button. No need to smash anything unless you're on the Pete Townsend kick. Thanks. Now, if I gave you the simple answer to the question, how do you use an FX3? Really, it would be, what do you want it to do? But that kind of sounds like a smart ass response and I really don't want to come off that way. So, Let's do a real world example and let's see what happens, you know, when you unbox your brand new FX3 for the first time. You open the box and there it is. A big black shiny boxy looking thing with knobs and buttons on the front and lots of jacks on the back. It sure does look cool. But now what? You see that the power switch is on the left so you turn it on. Whoa, impressive startup. So the screen says 59 bass guy. I'm going to assume that this is Fractal Audio's take on a 1959 Fender Bassman. It also lists eight different scenes. Scene one is highlighted in blue and it says crunch. Without knowing anything else, my first guess would be that the eight scenes are all various presets within a preset. Now going all the way over to the right, you see two jacks over here. The top one has a picture of headphones, and the bottom one is labeled INSTR. Now to the left of those jacks are the levels knobs out one, two, three, and four. Now you haven't even looked at the manual yet, but it seems pretty clear that you should plug your guitar into the instrument jack and plug a set of headphones into the headphone jack. We're not even dealing with the back panel yet. You don't know which levels knobs to adjust, so you set them all straight up. You plug in and hit that first chord.
That's where I lived for the next three days. I didn't even try to change anything. I mean, I was still really locked into that old amp and pedals routine where you set it and forget it. So I just hit that one patch, that preset, and that first scene, and just had a blast for three days. But all of those other scenes listed on the screen, how did you get to them? Now at this point, I really should have cracked open the manual, but I didn't. Instead, I saw that the scenes were listed top down, and I saw the nav buttons right here, and figured I'd try the down button. Oh, look at there, it changes the scenes. <laughs> But then my curiosity got the best of me again. How do you get to the other presets? I mean, I know this thing was supposed to be loaded like with three or four banks of presets, like 128 presets in each bank, and I wanted to know how to get to them. Did I open the manual? Oh, come on, you know better than that. Of course not. Now instead, I looked at the front panel again, and the biggest control was a knob labeled value. I didn't think it would permanently break anything if I tried turning the knob, so that's what I did. And sure as shit, it changed the preset. Holy crap! I spent the next month just going from preset to preset and trying out the different scenes. Now, all this time that I was doing this, my wife was in her room, and she was hearing nothing. <laughs> nothing! So she wasn't asking me, you know, hey, can you turn that down a little bit? Or, can you play a real song this time? Oh, come on, honey. You know I play Smoke on the Water just like Richie Blackmore. Well, at least like how Marty says Richie Blackmore does it. But anyway... You know. She knows. But after like five or six weeks of me sitting in the other room, just jamming away through the headphones, she got curious. She wanted to hear what it sounded like too. So I looked at the back panel. Lots of connections. But the top left had XLR jacks for output one. Again, without so much as consulting the manual, I made the brilliant guess that the out one level knob on the front corresponded to output one jacks on the back. I had a ratty old pair of power monitors from back in the old band days, so I pulled those out, hooked up the XLR cable to, like I said, to the back of the unit, then hooked one cable up to each of those powered speakers and turned them on, and whoa! Glorious stereo sound! At least I thought it sounded glorious, but my wife, you know, and she really always has supported me in my musical endeavors, she comes into the room and she goes, well, you know, that sounds okay, but let me ask you, that Les Paul, how much did that cost you? I said, well, you know, I bought it used for $2,200. She says, that, uh, that shiny new black box you got, how much is that? I said, well, you know, depending on when you bought it, anywhere from $2,000 upwards of $2,400. How much are those speakers you got it plugged into? How much did they cost? 
Uh, I think they were like 250 bucks each around 10 years ago. She says, do you see anything wrong with this picture? Go out and get yourself some good speakers. <laughs> okay. So I went online and ordered a pair of QSC uh, K10.2s. They sound fantastic. So thank you, darling. Love you much. <laughs> now, like I've said repeatedly, I had not so much as even cracked open the manual yet. There was so much more to learn. But this should just go to show you that the FX3 is easy to use once you get your hands on it and start fiddling about. Now there's a whole setup procedure I found out about once I did get around to looking at the manual and we'll get into that soon. Alright guys, I hope that answered some of your questions about how the FX3 works. So uh, next week we'll do a setup procedure and we'll probably even build a real simple preset. All right, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll get to them and we'll uh, do, I'll do some research and we'll learn this thing together. Thanks guys. See you next week.